Hey everyone, welcome to the Fireside Chat number 39 on Crushing Classical, redefining a thriving classical music career. I'm Tracy Friedlander, and today Eileen and I are talking about our upcoming Starting Line Challenge that starts this Monday. We talk about what a challenge actually is and what you really get out of doing it. Even though I've been learning from Eileen for over two years, I see things so clearly and with such certainty after doing each of these challenges that Eileen has designed. These challenges really are like nothing else out there for musicians. The thing I can't help thinking every time I do them is, how different would my life look now if I'd known this stuff sooner? Before we start, a couple of quick things. Please join the conversation at facebook.com slash crushing classical as well as crushing classical on Instagram. If you love what you see, it would mean so much to us if you would comment on posts and share them with your classical musician friends and colleagues. Also, if you love these podcasts, please take a moment to review Crushing Classical on iTunes. Having more reviews helps more musicians to find our podcast. We really appreciate it. And like like we'll be talking about today on the show, tomorrow we launch the Starting Line Challenge. It's four days and it's free to join. If you're ready to explore what a unique career or project can look like, Join today at facebook.com slash groups slash CC starting line challenge. The link is in the show notes. Let's get started. So you do realize that you can, um, you can change that number that, you know, how it like count, does a countdown. You could change that to a one if you want. Oh, do you know that? I would it's do in that. the setting. Uh-huh. Okay. It's in the setting. So as soon as I hit record, it starts. Yeah. Instead of a five. If you, it's just like one sec. It'll do one second. It'll do like a one second countdown. That'll start recording. Yeah. I don't like the five, four, three, two, one. Cause it's like, it's annoying. Ready? It takes too long. Get uh-huh. set. Go. Exactly. And then it's like, exactly. go start talking. You better well, have yeah. a good thing to say. I just want you to know that that you can change that in the preferences if you really want to. Oh, okay. I'm going to do that. I'd like a three, yeah. two, one or, or just a one. That's two. That's better. I know. That'd be great. So, so can we all just have a beer over? It's the most busiest time of the year. Yes. For musicians right now. Yes, We've got 40 nutcrackers and some of us have 60 and some of us have 100. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget about all the Christmas carols too. Yeah. And how many times will you play Sleigh Ride? <laughs> this year <laughs> totally absolutely i'm sure everybody's like oh they, they got to be tired of it by now i mean it, and it's only so early in the month i know we're still in, like the first week of the month you know basically. i have one christmas gig you do i have i have a friend i i have there's a conductor guy here who always hires me and i really like him and is and he's got he does it with this north carolina symphony or north carolina chorale the singers they're really good singers and it's an easy right down the street to service deal. So I'm doing it. Oh, wow. Check yeah. You so out. I so- get to play one concert of Christmas music and then I'm done. Are you going to wear a red bow in your hair? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Are you going to wear a red bow on your outfit? I'm going to wear all black. Are you going to wear a wreath? Are you going to wear a gold wreath lapel pin? Maybe I'll wear French horn earrings with little holly berries on them. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Go on That's eBay and find idea. that. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Because you should go to eBay to get earrings before you go play a Christmas gig. Yeah. Like ugly sweater earrings or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, it would be really cool if you could wear an ugly Christmas sweater to that concert. I know that. Wouldn't that be a great concert if everyone had to wear mm-hmm. ugly Christmas sweaters? I have a friend who does an ugly Christmas sweater party every year. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Holiday time, for real. Hilarious. Oh, my God. Lord knows there's plenty of them. I wish right? I could have saved some of the ones my mom had over the years. Oh, my mom. My mom was the queen. Oh, of my God. Ugly Christmas. So except, she my thought they were, except she thought they were pretty. She yeah. loved them. In fact, I think that was like kind of an ongoing gift that we got my mom every year. Uh, yeah, you, you know what? I can totally see your mom doing the ugly Christmas sweater thing. But my, I'm telling you, my mom did too. Mm-hmm. She was the queen. She'd always be wearing jeans or black pants, and she'd wear these really hideous. But you know, it, it's it's funny. Some of them were cute, but most of them were like, yeah, yeah, like snowmen. And I mean, we're talking '80s, so they were like the poofed sleeves, yeah, and the angora white with like a snowman on it or something oh my gosh i remember angora do you remember that yeah fuzzy sweaters that shed and make you sneeze 
Uh, <laughs> those were the days, I tell you. You don't have cats? Well, we can make it seem like it. Wear the sweater. <laughs> right? Totally. Oh, my gosh. That's funny as hell. That's hilarious. I know. Wow. So, yeah, holiday season. Holiday um, season. Well, and it's funny because I don't feel like holiday season because we've been working like, you know, fiends over here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, for real, I don't, I don't, I feel no sense of, well, of course I live in Arizona right now. So that's a little bit part of it. Like there's no snow. Um, there are some people with lights. So I've been, I, I actually did a little tour of my neighborhood recently and there were a lot of people who had lights out, but I'm not feeling the Christmas holiday thing right now because we're, you know, knee deep in training and development. Yes. You know? That's what's happening over here. Yeah. That's what's happening over here. So exactly. yeah, we're going to talk a little. I think we're going to do a little talk about that here. Yes. We're going to talk about challenges. Um, challenges and course, like we're in the middle of a course right now. Well, actually, we're almost at the end of it. We're yeah. very close to being done. And so there's been numerous, what I call brain explosions. Yeah. Eileen causes things. me to have brain explosions very mm. often. You, you just, you have these mind blowing things that you say. And I go, it's like my life gets flashed before me and I say oh and I just I know why that happened that way now mm -hmm. you know oh my god yeah, you could unravel your life in you know not very long not too many conversations you can unravel your whole life I know not just career either like yeah not just career yeah. like for me I, I I'm like thinking back to old boyfriends and and situations with that like there's so many answers yeah totally I feel like a lot of classical musicians have lives right now that are, they pretend like they're wrapped up in a very pretty bow, like a very beautiful Christmas package. But really what they are is, you know, the stereo that doesn't work anymore and there's duct tape all over it and they're mm -hmm. just trying to keep it together. Oh, yeah. And I want to take a sledgehammer to the whole thing. So do I. Because that's, that's what, what I, that's what that's I. That's what we're doing here in a lot of ways. Yep. I think. That's what I was doing with mm -hmm. my life. Yeah, you were you were duct taping it. You were duct taping it together, mm -hmm. and trying to have it look like a pretty like it was wrapped in beautiful Christmas paper with a pretty bow on it. Yeah, and that's who you have to be around your colleagues because you would never want to admit that like you actually want more. Because what more mm -hmm. could you want? You have a full calendar full of Christmas gigs. You know. Yeah, totally. But it's okay totally. to want things. It really is. And like when I finally, it was weird. And it's because okay to be unhappy with your current situation it's okay that you don't like the way things are right now and to actually say that yeah you know yeah it's just i just think classical music has been buttoned up for so long and so one reason why i encourage you to do a challenge is because i'm not going to tell you uh i'm not going to give you more things to do and i'm not going to give you more things to know uh i'm not going to give you business tips mm -hmm. um I'm not going to give you like, we're not going to do that. That's we're not talking we, about marketing. That's right. I think everybody thinks that's what we're going to talk about. I think everyone thinks that we're going to give them marketing tips because this is what everybody does, you know, marketing tips, business tips, how to be seen, how to be this. And they're like, I can't take any more than I already have. I can't handle more than I've already got. By the mm -hmm. way, there's a reason why you can't handle more than you've already got. There's actually, there's an actual reason, but that you have to find that out in the challenge. You have to find that's that's what you do a challenge for is find out what that's about. Yeah, and you find out so much, and and it's you find out so much in four days, like it's unreal in the challenges. Yep. Yep. So you, you're. I mean, I, I will. Uh, I will make you see. It, it's just inevitable. You're just going to see something that. You have ne you'll, you will see it in, in a way you've never seen. You will see your life and your career and everything you've done up to this point in a way you've never looked at it before. Guaranteed. Yeah. It's guaranteed. But like in an empowering way, I for sure think because. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like you won't go, oh, you know, I'm so. Yeah, no, there's nothing gonna, wrong. There's nothing wrong. Actually, you get you get empowerment and you then just so much happens. I, I found that I just felt, you know, it was it was actually a relief to see what what like what went on every time this happens. It's not just when I've done challenges, but during mm -hmm. during the challenges during this course, it's actually a relief to see it and to get mm -hmm. it to get that distinction made and, and go into that inquiry, essentially, 
Um, well, it's a relief because then you go, oh, that's what I was doing. Okay. I think a lot of people felt relieved. And I think that's why we had such high enrollment in this course that uh -huh. we started because they felt so much relief and they wanted more relief. Yes. Than they got in the challenge. Yeah. It's really, it's a load off. I'm going to tell you the challenge is not, yes, it's challenging in some ways. Because you have to look at things you haven't looked at this way before, but it's also a huge relief. Right. And and that's what you got to get to, what, what you said just a second ago, Eileen, is it's not more to do. It's really mm -hmm. not. So when I hear nope. back from people and they say, I'm too busy, I've got too much to do, which, by the way, that gets covered in the mm -hmm. challenge. I actually hit on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, get, I hit on that. Um, yeah. When they write back and say that, I'm just like, oh, that's a real shame because it really would actually make your life better this week. Yeah. And it's not, it would much actually time improve your week. Yep. Yeah. It would actually improve your week if you did it. Um, in, in, in fact, you might find yourself flowing through your week for the first time. Yeah. No matter how like busy I wanna, it is. I actually want to take the weight off of you. I don't want to put more on you. Mm -hmm. And I realize in life, mostly what people do is give you more to do, mm -hmm. give you more to think about, give you more, give you more. I actually want to take things away from you. I want to do the opposite. Yeah. You it's know? true. Yeah. I want to take things away from you. And uh, I mean, in a good way. Uh huh. Yeah, so, absolutely. And the other yeah, part, I think the other different. part that people love about it, aside from everything that you're teaching, is the community that becomes um, uh -huh. so strong during the it's challenge. An immediate community. I'm going to call it an immediate community. Yeah. Like those people don't feel like strangers to you. Everybody who plays the game, nobody. Um, like, you know, after the first day, there are no strangers in there. I actually feel like I have all these friends that I totally know, even though I've never met them in person. So do I. You know? It's so funny. I feel like we have a ton of friends right now. Yeah. I really do. I feel like we have a ton of friends. Yeah. You know, like they would do anything for us. Yeah. You know, like we could go out for beer. We could go out for coffee. We could, you know, hang. Yeah, and you know what else is so amazing, and it's so not true just generally in the classical music world, which was reflected in my video that I put out. Um, everyone in there genuinely wants each other to succeed, like so genuinely. Uh, you know? I know, like you think everyone's against you. Guess what? You're going to be really surprised to find out that's actually not true. Yeah. It's actually not true because I feel like everybody wants everybody to win in here, including in the challenges. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's pretty amazing, actually. It's really amazing. Yeah, it's really, it's really an amazing community that got created here. Um, it was really sort of an accidental community because, I mean, I knew I wanted there to be an element. I think you did too. You wanted there to be an element of community here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so one day we decided to do the challenge. I mean, this is like in what, September? Yeah, it was September. August or September? It was September. And, um, yeah, something. And... I think that was when we did the first one, but we didn't expect that it would be so instant. Yeah. Cause it was really there from the beginning. The second challenge more so than the first one. Mm -hmm. The second challenge was really when the community was getting formed. Yep. You know, so, and we've done two different ones. Now we've done starting line and we've done audience and impact and there will be more challenges. This is just the beginning. Cause yeah. we're doing different topics. It's all different topics. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I'm excited I, to uh, see the ones that, that we come up with, like, yeah, after that. We're going to change topics because it's, you know, because it's interesting. Um, the starting line is just what it sounds like. It really is, you know, if you are at the start of just the possibility of what else could I do or what else would I want to do. Like, maybe you don't want anything yet, but you think you might mm -hmm. in the future, you know? That's yeah. what I think. The, that's what I think the starting line is good for. I do too. It's really a. It's a very beginning level inquiry, but still really valuable. Definitely. Yeah, it's great for people who are just starting out, getting in college or getting out, but also everybody who is curious about what else they could do on top mm -hmm. of their jobs that they already have, because that's where I was when I realized, um, gee, you know, I don't want to keep doing the same thing I'm doing now for the next 
at the, to- at the time it would have, you know, if I did it to quote unquote retirement would have been like 20 more years, you know? Yep. Yep. And I was like, there's, I know that I have more potential than just doing this. Like I just knew it. And that's why I was depressed. I was like, mm-hmm. I am, I am much more of a person with much more ability, much more drive and everything else than to show up to a gig and play assistant horn for like 20 more years, just because that's the safe way to do it. That's a, that's the way I can get a certain amount of money and, and then just continue status quo. Mm-hmm. You know, and there totally. was there was some fear of letting that go because, you know, I thought, oh, well, who am I to the people that know me if I'm not a horn player playing regularly with the North Carolina Symphony? Yeah, that's a, that's an identity thing for sure. Yeah, you, you know, know, it becomes your identity. I remember when I um, stopped playing clarinet so many years ago, mm-hmm. I was very concerned about who I was after that. Yeah. I didn't know who I was. It really took me a couple of years to figure out that I could let go of that identity and, you know, be something else or consider other things and that people wouldn't think less of me. You know, that's really hard too, because, you know, you know, I solo with Chicago Symphony when I was 16. And so mm-hmm. when, when you do something like that, everybody thinks of you a certain way. So when they run into you later, they're like, how's the clarinet playing going? And I'm like, I'm not playing clarinet anymore. They're like, what do you mean you're not playing clarinet? You know what I mean? Yeah, you have totally. To, you really have to confront that everybody thought that's who you were and that you thought that that's who you were. Totally. And, and for me, I'm not quitting. So when I run into people, they go, Oh, are, are, they'll either say, are you still playing? You know, are you playing regularly with the North Carolina symphony? Or I noticed mm-hmm. that you're not there. Are you still playing? You know? Right. Um, oh my God. Yeah. You're still playing. It's hilarious. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, and then, and then I've had conversations with people where they ask me that, well, you know, what it, are you going to still play with the North Carolina Symphony? No, um, actually, I'm not. Um, are you going to do chamber music? Like, what are you? And I'm like, well, actually, you know, and I start to explain my my stuff a little bit. Like, well, I've got Crushing Classical. It's a podcast. It's a, we, we do these, cha- you know, they zone out like almost immediately. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. It's like they can't get with me on on a certain conversation. It's like, mm-hmm. you're you're that person. If you're not doing that thing that I know that you do, then I can't hear anything else. Right. They can't hear anything else. It's so interesting how that yeah. works. Isn't too. it? It's so interesting how that works. Yeah. And I don't totally understand it. You know, I don't, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I get that, you know, there's only, people can only hear so many things, mm-hmm. you know? And especially musicians, though. Yeah. You know, a musician can't hear that you're doing anything besides playing horn. Right. You know? Right. Very, very interesting. That's and and especially something. with um, starting contempo, um, mm-hmm. if you tell somebody in an orchestra that you're going to start, like, an orchestra, <laughs> yeah. they look at you like you're a three-horned unicorn. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, let's just not talk about it because you're going to be that person who thinks that's impossible. And I don't want to yeah. have that conversation with you, you know? Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. And that's, a, that, I mean, that's another cool thing that you're doing though, is starting Contempo. And I think that's great. Um, and I think a lot of that too, uh, I think you've gotten a lot of freedom about Contempo just out of doing challenges and novice course. Yeah, I definitely do. And it's fun because, you know, I think maybe a year ago, I would have thought, oh my gosh, can I even do another thing besides crushing classical? I mean, how am I going to do that? That's not enough time. How am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? Right. And now I'm like, hmm, I'm going to do these two things and maybe I'll add some more things later. Once well, you know, you can, always add, you can always add building an Airbnb in your house. Oh yeah, there's that. You Actually, can I made add some... a renovation. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's coming to an end. And I, right before this call, I, you know, you can see it on my Instagram stories. I made, I had my friend over, we, we cleaned a ton and we're continuing tomorrow. Like this is get it's getting ready this weekend. It is. Wow. So it's almost time. It's almost time. Like I'll be able to actually take pictures of it. Like this is, you know, actually I need to go on Facebook marketplace and, and get like a couple of things, you know, like a couple of, I need a little table and chairs because you know you're supposed to have an, a table and chairs in an airbnb like a place to like sit down eating for, yeah for like eating apparently if you if you do that you you get a higher points like business ready or something you can use it as a oh, desk oh i see okay yeah i didn't know that okay yeah 
Interesting. I, I I'm gonna learn the world of Airbnbs because I'm about to Airbnb. I'm about to go Airbnb my life here. Yes. I'm stoked. Mm-hmm. The Airbnb life. Airbnb life. Yep. Very excited to get rid of the remainder of my possessions and live an Airbnb life. That's where I'm going. I mean, talk about the fact that you don't have to worry about clutter or anything else because I'm you don't. Stoked. You just don't have stuff. I mean, that's how nope. I'm feeling when I'm cleaning. I'm like. Gee, I just want to live in a tiny house, like for real. Yeah, because but you know what's funny though? It's like I look at, but I have a lot of stuff like um, kitchen things, and I have to make decisions about what am I going to take with me because mm. you know if when you stay in an Airbnb, they don't always have everything you need. Yeah, you know what I, you know what I mean? Like they don't always have, uh, I don't know, like a garlic a decent press fry pan. Yeah, right. they don't have like yeah, they don't have a Vitamix. Oh, don't get up, don't get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep my Vitamix. I, I can't get rid of that, um, you know, because I use it pretty frequently. So yeah. things like that, you know, that's the only thing I would say that's difficult because I'm going to be, obviously, I'm going to be in my car and mm -hmm. I'm going to have my cat. So there is room for me to take some things. There is room for me to, um, you know, take a few things with me so that I can be, uh, you know, that I can function in the kitchen even yeah. if there's no, nothing there, you know, I can have my own stuff. Yeah. And like I, sometimes when we go on a road trip somewhere, I will take my Vitamix with me <laughs> sometimes, yeah. you know, like right? I need yeah. a smoothie in the morning. Yeah. And you can't really do that without, you know, I mean, uh, they, they, maybe they'll have a blender, but it's going to be a shitty blender. Oh man. I know. It's like, I mean, I could break their blades with the stuff I put in my... <laughs> The stuff I put in my, you know, like in my smoothie, like there's no way they're not going to be able to, you know. Yeah. I mean, a regular blender can barely handle frozen fruit. Ah, uh, I know. I remember the last time I tried using one, we were at this beach house um, for my cousin's wedding and we tried to make, I tried to make a smoothie in there. It was like, um, it was hilarious. It was like half, like I put in some strawberries, frozen strawberries. And mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't even, they were just clumps, frozen strawberries kind of mushed up with some. I mean, it was, it was terrible. It wasn't blended at all. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you get spoiled when you have things like a Vitamix. Yeah. You know, you just get spoiled. It's yeah, just you, what it is. And so, yeah, I got it. There's certain spoiling things that I need. You know, I, I have a really nice sharp knife that has to come. Yeah. Like I can't, they, they always have shitty knives in Airbnbs. That's true. Mostly because they don't want people to steal them, which I get. Yeah. You know, I understand that. And so it's going to be different. You know, it's going to be, it's a different way to operate, you know, but I'm it excited. It sure is. But you know, what's going to be yeah. cool. You're going to like, probably by the end of when you, whenever you decide to stop doing the Airbnb life, you're going to really know where you do want to live. Oh, for sure. You know, you're going to yeah. see so much. I've gone across the country. See yeah. A lot of things. Yep. I'll definitely know. I'm sure of it. Yeah. yeah. We'll see where I end up. I mean, I don't know. and But I hope I'm going to be Airbnb for a long time, actually. Like, I'm actually hoping it's going to be a few years. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it would be nice to be able to move with the climate, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I don't want to be in this climate, or it's too rainy, or, hey, it's rainy one time. With, like, I think about Seattle. I really enjoy it. I went to go see Seattle uh, this summer, and uh, I was there for a week, and it was great. I, I loved it. And... um that's a place I would love to go back to. And of course they had the fires there this summer. Mm. And so you couldn't really see Seattle because the, the air was covered in smoke. Really. You couldn't even see the city really because it was covered in smoke. And so, um, and it was hard to breathe actually. So, um, but I'd love to go back there in the summertime, like August when it hardly rains at all. That's when I was there actually this year. And it, it, it you know, it didn't rain at all while I was there. And that's what it's, it's known for that. That would be a great place to go for, you know, a month, let's say. Yep. I was there when it was not the rainy time in the summer too. The one the I've been there twice and one of the times it was more rainy and then the other time I went it was like this we got a few days of just sunny weather and it was really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. So yeah, so I'm you know, it's gonna be a different it's gonna be definitely a different uh experience. Yeah. You know? It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And, and also I've, what's, what's the biggest challenge for me is going to be, I've always had a lot of trouble working on the road. That's what I, I've always said. Like, um, you know, whenever I've got, I go on trips, I really try not to plan calls and work and things, but this is going to be a little different because now I'm going to be living on the road essentially. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's going to be new. That whole thing is going to be new for me to manage a schedule and still be, 
semi traveling, if you will. Yeah. Not traveling every day, certainly, but often enough that I'm going to have to be, it's going to be a new set of barriers. Let's put it that way, like a new set of obstacles for me to deal with. And I'm actually looking forward to, I'm actually looking forward to that. That's cool. So have you decided how long you want to stay in one place at a time? No, um, I really haven't. I mean, I'll probably stay for, I'm guessing a week or two. Mm -hmm. Um, probably no more than a week, uh, or sorry, no more than two weeks in one place. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm thinking like a week, uh, maximum usually in one place, a week, week and a half, something like that. Okay. It really depends. Um, I want to stay there long enough that I can get settled and sort of look around and see what's there, you know, uh, meet people, all that sort of thing. Like I really, I definitely want to, uh, stay long enough to have an experience wherever I am. Yeah. You know, and I don't mean an outdoor experience. I mean a people experience, Mm -hmm. you know, that's one thing that I want to do more of in 2018 is just connect with people. Yeah. A lot more, like a lot, a lot more. Um, I don't, I, I'm fortunate that I, even though I'm a bit of an introvert, I do not have social anxiety. I do need time alone. I do need alone time and time to myself, certainly, but I do not have any, any form of social anxiety at all. That's good. So, yeah, I'm glad about that. I'm really glad about that. Because, you know, some people do. Some people get real anxious in social situations. Mm-hmm. I'm not one of those people. Yeah. Yeah, me I neither. think I used to be that. Really? I think I used to be that. Yeah. I think when I was younger, I was that. But now I'm like, it's not even an issue at all. I can talk to anyone about anything. You know what's interesting, though? I don't know if I've said this before. Um, whenever you talk to a guy, like as a woman, you talk to a guy. Um, it's funny. It happened the other day. I was sitting next to this guy. Um I went to one of my favorite hangouts and I was just sitting there. I had lunch there and I was sitting next to this guy and we were having this discussion. And at some point, and I, and I said something, I said, you have a really, I said, you've got really, um, I said, you have a really great smile. Like it's, he's got really straight teeth, you know, mm-hmm. and they're very white. And I said, so do you, I said, I'm curious, do you drink coffee? He said, he said, yeah, I drink coffee every day. I'm like, how do you keep your teeth that white? It's amazing. <laughs> You know, he said, I, he said, I don't know. He's like, I said, do you drink through a straw? Like we're joking around, right? He says, no, you know, so we were joking. And a little bit after that, he goes, so are you hitting on me? And I said, why would I be hitting on you? That's ridiculous. That happened the other day? Yeah. Oh my God. And by the way, this happens all the time. No, because I remember a similar story you told me, but you were at a bar. You were at a bar having wings or something. Yeah. I wasn't having wings this time. I was having something else, but I was at, um, and actually, I know I was at a different place. Mm-hmm. And seriously, this happens all the time. You're like, no, as a matter of fact, I'm a dental hygienist. No, just kidding. Well, I mean, <laughs> I just don't understand why all the time, just because you're nice to somebody and you're having laughs, automatically you're hitting on them. How is that possible? Yeah, I know. It's stupid. Like, why is being friendly, why does that equate to your hitting on people? I have no idea. I get it. That'd be like a, me assuming a guy who's talking to me is hitting on me. Every time. Yeah, every time. That's ridiculous. Why can't we just all hang out and talk and laugh and make jokes and go home? Why can't we just do that? I know. So stupid. I think it's funny. So anyway, but it was cool. I mean, it's it's going to be, and by the way, that's even, that's even more fun. Like to, one of the things I really look forward to about the Airbnb thing is um, meeting new people and new places and having different conversations. I think it's fun to talk to people. You'll get like kind of a cross section of the type of person who lives in a place, you know? Yeah, I will. Yeah. And they'll tell me about all the favorite things they love to do. And because that's what happens when you go someplace, you know, they tell you about all the things they love to do there. Yeah. You know? All the, their favorite places. Oh, you should go here. Like if they find out you're not from there, Oh, you should go try this. And Oh, you should that. And Oh, you should go here. You know, you notice that? Oh, I know. I, one day David and I walked to a, we walked to a restaurant cause it was only a couple blocks away. And when we were walking back, there was a woman who was just getting in town like she just she because we were walking by the train station so she was she must have just parked her car or gotten out of a cab or get, got off the train I don't know but she was like hey do you know if this restaurant is good like do you know of a good restaurant like right around here and we were like yeah you know it's fun because yeah. she was so happy she ran into us she's like oh my gosh I'm gonna go try that place right now so yeah. has, has she ever heard of uh, just you know I know this is a dumb question but has she ever heard of Yelp <laughs> I should have said that. Hey, you know, do you have your phone? 
Go look at Yelp. Dude, I mean, the great thing, the greatest thing about having a cell phone, a mobile phone these days, is you don't, you can be dropped in the middle of you don't know where, and you can find your way out, no problem. You can find somewhere to eat. Yep. You can find somewhere to stay overnight. You can find great, you know. How did we live without that? I know I use Yelp every that? time I, I travel to find every time to find a yep. good restaurant that has good reviews and stuff. I found the most amazing Indian restaurant like really close to our hotel one time on a road trip. Oh, that's awesome because I love Indian food. Yeah. Indian food's one and of the, my favorite. And it was packed and all the people in there were Indian, so you knew it was good, like when you walked in. You know, yeah, yeah, like, it's true. It's true. When when all, when all the Indians go there, you know that it's great food. Yeah. You know, if there's only Americans in there, there's, you know, something's wrong. <laughs> you got to get out of there. Got to get out of the hightail it out of there. <laughs> that's so funny. But anyway, not to go on a huge tangent on the Airbnb, but um, I think this is all part of, in my opinion, you know, I think about all the work that we do with challenges and courses and everything. It's really, you know, it's really about expanding mm -hmm. your life, your work, your relationships, everything. I mean, I think, you know, if, if there's one thing that's happening right now in Crushing Classical, it's that we are expanding as people, as a little business, because um, we are a little baby business. We're a little itty bitty business. Yeah. Um, we're just a little itty bitty one. <laughs> but um like currently right we're just a little itty bitty business yeah but we're growing you know we're 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 the little business that could <laughs> <laughs> i think i can i think i can i think i can i can yeah exactly i know i can but i know yeah, but like it's funny. it starts with challenges right now i mean that's that's sort of our offer right now is the challenges yeah to begin with there will be other offers you know i'm sure oh yeah because, you know, I've, there's some of you who are listening who are never going to do a challenge because I don't have time. Yeah. So there's got to be, there There will be other ways to get the info that's not a four-day challenge. We'll mm -hmm. figure it out. It's still in the works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes, you know, it takes something to come up with, you know, because part of it is I want you to have an experience, I think, is that's the deal is um, it's really... There, there are other ways to deliver it. The issue is that you miss the community aspect. Yeah, it's not the same if you just get the information the without the other interaction going that's on. That's the problem. Yeah, yep. that's the problem is that it's not the same. And so you miss that, uh, you know, that warm fuzzy. And it's funny, right now you might think you don't care about the warm fuzzy because screw everyone. Mm -hmm. Like that might be where you are right now. But the only reason why you're saying that is because you've lived in a world where everyone is separate and hides. And the minute you get into a room, you'll find with all these people, you'll find out that nobody actually wanted to do that in the first place. Yeah. Nobody ever wanted to do that. Nobody ever wanted to hide. Nobody ever wanted to be separate. Mm -hmm. And you don't either. Like you might think you want to be separate right now, but you didn't know that you actually don't want that. Right. Really interesting. And so that's the part that kind of, you know, that's the part that I'm really challenged by right now is, okay, so how do I create this experience? I'm not there yet. How do I create this experience that still, that doesn't lack the experience, if you will? Right. You know? And so I'm still um, pondering that, what that's going to look like. Right. Not entirely sure yet. So, yeah. Um, and by the way, you know, just so you know, uh, people ask us, you know, what happens in the challenge? It's a, it's an inquiry. You know, we lead, uh, I lead an inquiry and it lasts about 30 minutes a day or something like that. It's a Facebook live. That's how we're delivering it currently. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I give you, I lay out some, um, a new way of thinking. And so I pose questions. And you look at your life and you start to um, kind of place your life inside of the context that I give you. That's right. how it works. So you're only dealing with your own life. You're not dealing with anyone else's life. You're only dealing with yours. Your circumstances, your situation, your experience, your everything. It's So you only deal with your life. You're not messing with anyone else's life or anyone else's stuff you get to you definitely get to see what other people are dealing with in their life that's the community part is you get to see um that a lot of people are very similar to you mm -hmm. 
you get to see all the similarities. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. That's what it's people very- really love. I mean, so yep. many people have said, oh, I feel like I, I'm understood. I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. You know. Exactly. You know, I finally right. feel like, you know, I've got, you know, there's people I know that are going through the same things I've gone through or had the same experiences I've had or whatever. Mm-hmm. Totally. It's very, cool. it's very cool. By the way, I can hear some excitement in the background. What's happening? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> are you rolling your eyes over there? <laughs> yeah. I'm going, oh, I told her to be quiet. That's so what is she, what, is she watching a movie? No, she's, she's with a, like a, a babysitter, a kid sitter. That's so funny. I wonder what they're doing. They are cracking up. They're oh laughing? Gosh. Yeah, she's laughing hysterically. Yeah, I can hear. It. It's hilarious. <laughs> that's, on, that's so funny. That's I, great. I know. She's having a good time, but it's like a little distracting right now. I know, right? I guess the sitter forgot the whole, could you guys keep it down? Yeah, even though and, I said that before I got in here. Right. And actually, I didn't know how you were handling. I didn't know if you were doing a sitter today or what you were doing because I know it's a weekend. So yeah, well, um, when I started cleaning out the Airbnb, um, it's, it was really great because my friend who's been helping us all through the construction stuff, um, her daughter has watched Violet lots, and so I'm like, "Hey, can you come? And can you bring your daughter?" She's like, "Yeah." Oh, okay, that works so out well. It worked out okay. really well, and then she, when she left. She had to go do some stuff with her other kids, and um, and I'm like, well, can can she stay? And she's like, yeah, she can. So I'm like, good, done. Awesome, that works out well. Yeah, because uh, because David's teaching, right? Yeah, and this okay. morning she actually watched a movie really quietly, but yeah, that's good. That's we- helpful. Yeah, weekends are yeah. a little tougher over here. Weekends are a little tough. Yeah, Shay Freelander. Yeah. Yeah. Shea Freelander. <laughs> but I have to tell exactly. you, I have to tell you, uh, Christmas vacation is coming up, or holiday break. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. But I booked um, art class for a week, which is awesome. You did? Yeah. You know, the Real, track That out was came. super brilliant. I didn't even know they did that over the holidays. Super that's brilliant. Well, there's this, there's some of the schools in this area are year round. So they only have breaks like, uh, they don't have like um, the traditional breaks. So they'll have like three weeks off for the summer and then they go year round, but then they'll, yeah. So they have way shorter breaks than three months in the summer. They'll do like, so, oh, interesting. So is now, is she in school right now? Does she she get a break? Yours, your daughter? Yeah, she gets a two week break. So hers is a traditional schedule. So like the summer is like June, June, July and August, you know, and the, the December break is two weeks and it's a normal kind of same as every other school that you'd ever heard of kind of okay. deal. Okay. But um, because of these year round schools, a lot of these, they call them track out camps because that's what they say. The kids are tracked out. Okay. So they're on these tracks and they rotate the kids. So I think that I think more like in within the same school, different kids will be in and different kids will be out. So more kids can go to the same school. I see. Okay. So that's anyway, cool. the track out camp is this art camp and she did it over the summer. And so I'm like, hey, can we do next week? She's like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that they even offered that. That's great. It's really great, yeah. So now is that class like, is that like uh, morning to like midday? It's or all something? day. It's all this from eight, uh, nine o'clock to 4 p.m. Oh, wow. It's a whole day. Yeah. And you know, some great. kids, I, you know, speaking of like, on unique endeavors like people could totally do this in cities where there's year-round schools with like music stuff you know what i mm-hmm. mean like this woman she she happens to be an artist and an art teacher but still it's an extracurricular quote unquote and mm-hmm. she's created this business where she has this track out camp and she's growing it to the point where brilliant. She, yeah she's That's growing brilliant. she's growing it so she can sell it essentially to another art teacher that's what she wants to do she told me her business plan Okay. Um, wow. She wants to grow it and have all the clients and have it running in a certain way and everything. And then when she's ready to, she'll sell it as as is. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people actually who like to do that. They like to grow a business to sell it. Yeah. A lot but of she like enjoys it all along the way. Like she loves the kids. She's like one of the most bubbly, fun. She's a Southern woman and <laughs> she's like, Hey, baby doll, what's going on? Like every time we come, she's really sweet. Yeah. That's cool. 
That's cool. Yeah, there's and there's so many different ways to run a business, but that's one of them, you know, the whole idea of building it up to sell it. Yeah. I've never been that person. I've never been someone who wanted to sell anything. Like that's never been in my mind. Mm -hmm. I just, for some reason, I like the stay and play. Yeah, for me, that's never what I thought of either. But um, uh -huh. yeah, it's sort it's, of like I buying a house to fix it up and sell it, like live in it and, and fix it up and then move again. Like, because moving yeah. is my least favorite thing. So well, and also because starting things, I don't know, I, I just don't think I really enjoy starting things that much. Um, I don't really, I don't like the start. I like the, the middle and the, I, I like the running of things, not the starting of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's just me, you know? Yeah. Some people, just, some people like to do the start, you know, the, um, all the stuff in the middle and then they close it down. I don't want to have to start something new. Right. I like that it runs. Right. Didn't, doesn't your brother like to shut him down and start over? Oh, hundred percent. Totally. That's why you guys like. He loves the starting of things. Yeah. Because you guys had businesses before. And he'd be like, yep. well, it's over. And you're like, yep. wait, it's wait, done. wait, wait. And he'd burn it down. Yeah, he'd burn it. I, 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 I'm like, are you kidding me right now? He'd be like, no, I have another idea. Oh, my God. Really? Do we have to do this? Uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't partner with somebody like that either. Oh, it was hard. I'm telling you, for five years, it was hard. Yeah. I mean, and listen, we did really well. Don't get me wrong. Like right. we had a lot of really good years in there, but you know, to constantly start something and then, you know, run it for a while. And I'm thinking we're going to grow it and we're going to evolve it. And, you know, he'd be like, okay, we're, this is it. We're done. We're going to shut this baby down. Cause I got something else we're going to do. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I mean, it was so frustrating because starting something up takes a lot of work. It really yeah. does. I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, he shared the story of the first business he grew on that way back, that fireside, that great fireside. Uh -huh. Yeah. And if anyone wants someone to hand him a tremendously awesome idea on a silver platter, go and listen to that podcast. For real. And what's really funny is it really killed me. I remember when they were running that business and then, you know, all of a sudden he can, Ken didn't want to run it anymore. And so he sort of handed it over to his wife. I mean, it was really sort of a messy kind of a thing. Like, you know, he didn't really ask her. <laughs> it wasn't really intentional. It was more like, yeah, I'm done with this. You know, it was, he, you know, it's like, it's like eating, eating, uh, your turkey dinner and just leaving your plate on the table. <laughs> Can you clean this up? I mean, <laughs> That's so funny. You know? When you said eating, I thought of someone like eating half of a bowl of ice cream and giving him the melted one here. Yeah. Whatever's left over in the, I don't exactly. want to finish it. You can have the exactly. melted ice For cream real. soup. I mean, that's really what it was like. I mean, ser and, and I just remember being in pain over it because she was not excited about running it at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, she was really confronted by it. She did not, it was just not her deal. Um, yeah. She didn't really want to run a business is what it was. And so uh, she was used to having a paycheck and being a teacher, actually. That was her use. That was her, that's what she had been doing before they got married. And so it was just funny because. And I remember looking at it and going, how can you not want to run this? It's amazing. How can you not want to grow this? What's wrong with you? Like I, I was imagining they, they could have made this a multi-state deal. Like franchise. Like, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like train easily. people, like they could have held trainings oh. on how to do it and then send people easily. off into their communities to do it. I know. So see, this is how you and I are the same because yeah. we're like, we can evolve it and we can grow it and we can add this and we can yeah. do that. We can, yeah. that's exactly the way that I am. I'm the same way. Like that's. Now that we've got this, what are we going to do with it? Let's grow it. And and he was just not, he's just not that way. He still isn't that way. Yeah. And so, and, and so that business ended up, they ended up closing it. They ended up, they licensed out their shows and uh, they ended up closing the business. That was it. Wow. That was it. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I mean, he went from making, you know, a salary as a choir director yep. to making like, what did he say on the show? Like two fifty. Two hundred fifty thousand or something. I can't more remember. Than that. Yeah, I can't remember how much he made, but it was definitely it was an, it was a nice six figure amount. Like they were yeah. making, they were doing very well. They were doing very well, and so it's just funny that I think it's hilarious that you know that that's we just have we're just different. You know, we're uh -huh. just very, very different, and it's actually why we ended up having to get out of business with each other. It's not that we didn't you know enjoy working together because we did. We were a good yin to each other's yang, if you will. Very different. Um, strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. both of us. And so it was a good compliment. But the way we didn't compliment was that whole he wanted to start something new all the time. And yeah. I just don't want to do no, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. File under um no. Right. I just, 
that's not happening. Like this is that that is completely not me at all. So you should be really happy that I'm not that person because, you know. Yeah, that makes me break out in hives when someone says, "Let's let's crash this and start something new." Like I'm, I am so like just a little while ago. Torching, can you imagine torching, crushing classical right now? I'm going. <laughs> let's start over and do something else. <laughs> no, and you know, you know what? Like just when just when we were starting this and we were on a different. Um, way to record it and I was like I don't like the sound quality let's switch to the other one like I was just and then we we hooked up again on Skype and I said oh my god do you remember like a year ago that would have I that would have sent me into a panic like that mm -hmm. that one of them wasn't working and I didn't have a backup plan right well and I remember telling you about screen flow this is back when you know Tracy was a little newer at this and so and we were having a problem with the platform that we were using and the podcast platform we were using and so I said, well, you know what you can do is, you know, we can use ScreenFlow and I, you know, and she was like, er, uh, er, well, I don't know mm, how to do that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you and now I use really... ScreenFlow all the time. Yeah. And it's just totally. funny because I like feeling like, oh, I know how to do something. Like, I don't want to mm -hmm. go back to that. I don't know how to do the, anything that I'm doing feeling well, that you have at yeah, the beginning. Well, that's, it's interesting that you say that because I think you're more willing to do now anyway things you don't know how to do just right off yeah, the bat. Yeah, that's true because I learned that I could Yeah. when I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty amazing when you actually figure out that you, you can learn things. Yeah. And we talk yep. about that in our challenges. We do. We talk and about the current that course. Lot. Yeah. Yep. A lot of, um, in fact, uh, I remember one of the reasons why somebody sent me a message the other day. I didn't tell you this. Somebody sent me a message the other day and said, so Eileen, why did you leave music? I'm curious. Oh, really? And I'm like, that's a, I'm like, like that's a really. Someone from our course? For the uh -huh. challenge or something? Oh. Yeah. From the course. Oh. And she's done the challenges too. Okay. And, um, and I wrote her back and I said, <clears throat> it's, that's a loaded question. First of all, there's many reasons, but um, one of the reasons I gave her though, I won't tell you all the reasons I gave her because it's not important. The important reason I gave her though was that I recognized at age 26, I quit playing at 27, by the way. Um, at 26, I recognized that not knowing how to do anything besides clarinet was a precarious spot for me to be in, not smart. I recognized that only know how to play, know, only knowing how to play clarinet was a very, very dumb thing for me to be doing. Yeah. Like I need, like in other words, I needed skills. Like if I was going to go into my thirties, I was 26 at the time, but contemplating quitting clarinet at that time, I knew that not knowing more than I knew at that point was a bad idea. Yeah. That never occurred and, to me. And I know. And that's why I bring it up because I know t that didn't even occur to you. Yeah. And you know, like, I think it's amazing that that occurred to you and it didn't occur to me and I didn't want to quit, but it was, it is still a problem that I had no other skills. I mean, I had like admin, basic administrative skills. Like one of them was I can type really fast, but mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. besides that, like, um, what's wrong with having a ton more skills outside of your instrument and you still play your instrument? Like, that's what I'm learning now through building this business. Like, I understand social media. Like I remember, <clears throat> I remember a year and a half, two years ago, I would marvel at people who were using other ones besides Facebook. Cause that was basically the only one that I used kind of mm -hmm. used. I yeah. used it. I used it, but I didn't, um, use it, use it like how we talk about how we use it, you know, right. which is, you know, we've talked about it on other episodes, so I'm not going to talk about it now, but, um, that was the only one that I, I used. And so like, I would marvel at people like, how do you know how to do this, that, and the other? Now I, now I get it. Like, so it's like mm -hmm. a skill. I can help other people with that if I want, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I just think, you know, um, I, and I think that very narrow thing that classical musicians do, uh, not learning other skills, you know, it's funny. You don't really care when you're in your twenties, but once you get to be in your thirties and closer to 40, it actually does become a problem if you don't know how to do other things. Yeah. Like you, I mean, you literally become scared to do anything new is the problem. That is the problem because as you get older, you get kind of cemented in your ways. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we can see it. We can see it in older people. We can see it yep. in our parents. Mm -hmm. We can see it in our aunts and uncles and grandparents and all that, right? Yeah. What is that? You can That's see really people weird. get very cemented. Yeah. They just get very cemented in their ways. Mm -hmm. They stop learning. Yeah. Yep. That's you know, like why I'm always marveling when people's grandparents have iPhones. You know, I'm like, whoa, your grandparents have iPhones? Like, I had this friend whose grandpa had an iPhone. 
He was like 80. I'm like, whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, and but you know what it is, too? It's that um, we're taught to learn until we're, you know, let's say 22. Yeah. Or if you go to, you know, if you do grad degree, right? Um, yeah. And then we're not taught, though, that to learn after that. That's just not part of our culture. Oh, you're absolutely right about that. It's really not. It's We aren't really taught to do that. We're just, you know, you're in school until you're, let's say, 20, 22, 23, 24, depending on how long you're in school. And then after that, you just stop learning. Well, and I think that's because, and I'm sure people have had this argument before, but you know the argument that school is meant to train you to become a factory worker, like that's when mm-hmm. standardized school started. So they, the whole point of factory, I mean, of that kind of school system was to get you to work into in a factory. And they didn't want you to work in a factory until you launched your business or work in a factory until you got that career you wanted. Like they wanted you to just do that forever until you're done, till you retire. Yeah. I mean, that's literally totally. what my grandfather did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He went to high school. And then he graduated and he worked in a factory until he retired. Mm -hmm. And like all of his brothers and sisters did the same thing. I think they even worked in, some of them worked in the same factory. I mean, because that's like the 1940s and 50s and 60s. Like that's what people did. But like, it's funny because people don't live their lives like that anymore. But the education Mm -hmm. system is exactly exactly the same. We just go to school longer and we pay more for it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny. Totally. So it's interesting. You know, it's like... Um, so that's, a, I think that's a lot of what you were up against when you decided to switch careers or do something different. Yeah. And that's, and that's goes right into like what we're doing here, which is educating ourselves or educating ourselves. Cause I am educating myself at the same time that we're, that you're leading these courses and challenges. It's like, mm-hmm. there's so much more to creating your career than just playing your instrument. And the reason is not because you're in the music world and you don't understand the business world. That's actually not the reason because you can understand the business world. You're capable of doing that Mm -hmm. if that's what you have to do. I mean, you don't even have to understand the business world to start a business, but you know, I won't get into that either. But the point, the point is, is that what you're leading is, is going, is going deeper in, in your abilities, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have more ability than you think you have. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And so you don't think you do. And how do you break that apart? And that's what that's what we're doing in the challenges. Yeah, for sure. The challenges you know? breaks that apart for sure. It yeah. definitely, cha- if, if the reason it's called a challenge, I would say is because it challenges what you think right now about yourself and your experience and what you think you know. Mm-hmm. That's really what it is. It challenges what you think about yourself, your view of yourself your view of what you've done so far, all the things that have happened, all the experiences you've had, that's the challenge. Yeah. That's what the challenge is. It challenges your, what you see, how you think about everything that's happened to you so far in yep. your life. In that's your exactly life. what it is. But, that's what it but is. when it, when you do that inquiry and you challenge yourself in that way, it doesn't make you feel anything but relief. It's not nope. so like when when you say those words and you think, oh, gee, like that sounds heavy. No, but it's actually not because no. the distinction makes yep. you go, ah, it's like you get yeah. it's like a load off. It really is. Yeah. You're so like, you'll be able to breathe again. Yeah. If you can't breathe right now, you should do a challenge. <laughs> yep. You will breathe easier in four days. If you think you don't have time for anything in your life, you should do a challenge. You should do a challenge. You should do it because you think you don't have time. Exactly. In fact, that's what oh, no. I should respond to people when yep. they say it. If you think, uh, what, what was it? Uh, somebody posted in one of our groups the other day. They go, well, how, what, what do they say about meditation? Um, if you, if you, th- uh, if you, you should meditate an hour a day. If you think you don't have time, you should meditate two hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Actually, I've never heard that before, but that's funny. I've heard that before. It's really funny. I think it's funny. Yeah. And by the way, we don't talk about meditation, but I'm just using that as an example of <laughs> exactly. like if you think if if the challenge only takes like 30, 35 minutes a day for four days, that's it. Um, but if you think you don't have time, you should definitely do the challenge. Oh, absolutely. People say that to me. They're like, I have a gig that week and I have this and that and the other. I go, Oh, so you're not gonna watch Netflix when you get home? Because you could right. just watch this instead. Right. 
Totally. I don't know. Just a thought. Just a thought. Exactly. (laughs) So anyway, yeah, get get on it, man. Get in our challenges. You're really, yeah, it's really something like you, you really just got to do it. It's, it's, um, I promise you, it's going to be not like nothing you've ever experienced before in the best possible way. Yep. It's not what you're expecting it to be. Let me put it that way. Uh, I think I've, I think we've surprised more people than we can count on multiple hands and feet Mm -hmm. about what this is. Yep. People come in thinking they know what it's going to be, and we always surprise them every time, which is cool. It is really cool. It's cool. So, so it's the 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 uh, link for it is facebook.com slash groups slash cc starting line challenge, and I'll put it in the show notes so you can just press it, and it'll okay. and it'll link awesome. straight Join to us. that from the podcast because the podcast, if you listen on iTunes, it's really great because the show notes. The, the app got recently updated and kind of re- reconfigured. And when you scroll up and you see the show notes, it's very clear links. So you click on a oh, link. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, click I on a link, actually... it'll open your browser. It'll open oh, probably if you have it set up on your phone to, to open Facebook app. When you click on that, it'll probably do that. Okay. Yeah, I haven't yeah. actually used the app, so that's good to know. I haven't used the app the, um, the app in a while. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Rock on, dude. Yeah, this was great. All right, so let's let's get this up so it can launch on Sunday. All right, fantastic, y'all. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye.